The new Hawkeye series has a fundamental ideological blind spot, and here's why that's a problem. Look, first things first, I want to make it clear that I'm having a great time with the Hawkeye series. Kate Bishop in particular is one of my favourite new MCU characters in a very long time, and Hayley Steinfeld's enthusiastic portrayal feels layered and genuine. This video isn't me criticising the series or this character, not really. It's more my attempt to use Kate to highlight a particular aspect of the Hawkeye series and the MCU as a whole that I find troubling. And in a nutshell, that's the overlap of privilege and superheroics, specifically financial privilege, and the way that having a buttload of money interacts with the sort of messaging the MCU tries to present. We'll talk about the wider MCU in this context in a little while, but first, let's talk about Kate Bishop. She's plucky, she's skilled, she's a badass, but she's also rich. Really rich. And being the daughter of wealthy parents doesn't make her bad, that's not what I'm saying at all. What I am saying though is that it's this wealth which is directly responsible for the events of the Hawkeye series, in a way that's never really recognised diegetically. And I don't just mean that Kate's life and skill set, like the years upon years of necessary archery and martial arts classes, are objectively more achievable for someone from a rich background, even though that is doubtless true. I'm not even talking about the fact that the plot's inciting incident, that is, Kate's interference with the underground auction and theft of the Ronin suit, happens directly due to the aggressive 1%ness of the heroine. No, the first thing I want to point out is something which is more obvious, but it's so obvious that it's maybe hard to notice. Kate is free to run around New York all day and night with Hawkeye. Everything that she does, everything that they do together over this week, is possible because she's an heiress, practically. Think about it, the major reason that Kate is even able to have this adventure be the star of this story is the fact that she has no other obligations. Yeah, she has a job, but she works for her mum's company. A, she's not getting fired if she misses a few shifts, and B, she's clearly not doing it for the money. Her mum pays for her credit cards. She has her own apartment in New York City, despite her parents owning a penthouse in the same place. So she has a job on paper, but she doesn't have any of the obligations that accompany employment for most people. If one of the other servers that Kate was impersonating had been in the auction room, if it was Gary who stole the Ronin suit, even if they had been as physically skilled as Kate, the story wouldn't have played out the same way. Hawkeye would have been like, Hey, we've got to stake out the tracksuit mafia, or whatever, and this non-Kate character would have replied, Oh shoot, I can't, I have to go to work so I can pay rent and not, you know, become homeless. And yeah, Kate's a college student, sure, but most non-rich college students have to work during their degree, unless you're lucky enough to live in a sophisticated country which doesn't financially penalise people for getting an education. Hell, I had to do all sorts of temp jobs over the course of my time at university, and I'm in the UK with a student loan situation which is slightly less horrific than that of the US, so if I met up with an Avenger over my Christmas break, it would have been because I was serving them in a pub. So Kate is very much in a position of privilege, financially speaking, and this is the reason that the events of the Hawkeye series can unfold. But okay, so what? That's realistic, right? The 1% get all of the opportunities while the rest of us are busy working. Well, there's two things I'd say to that. One, this is a sort of realism that the MCU doesn't really tend to go in for. Wealth isn't typically a barrier to the MCU's superheroes. Just look at what these films have done to Spider-Man, or how Shang-Chi can afford to live alone in San Francisco working as a valet. We'll talk a little more about this shortly, but I think it's fair to say that the MCU never dwells on the implications of money unless they want to consciously make a point about money. Instead, it prefers to jettison financial realism for the sake of the story. And the second point I want to make is that Hawkeye isn't interested in making a point about financial privilege. If anything, it's the opposite. In episode one, Kate's mum says this to her. I know that young people think they're invincible, and rich people think they're invincible, and you have always been both, so take it from someone who hasn't. You're not. This line is hugely telling, I think, of this series' attitude towards Kate's wealth. 
It's tied to her naivety, this show suggests, and as such, her overwhelming wealth isn't presented as a huge boon, and the only reason she's able to get caught up in Clint's world. It's presented as a weakness, something Kate has to overcome. And this isn't even Kate being forced to check her privilege or anything like that. The privilege is only referenced here to set up the series-long arc about Kate's overconfidence and self-concern. The series, then, is only willing to conceive of money, of financial privilege, as an intangible auxiliary factor, which only ever becomes semi-relevant for its effects upon our heroine's character flaws. It's not tangible, and we never acknowledge the material ways in which these factors differentiate Kate's existence from mine or yours. Let's compare this for a second to the earlier MCU Disney Plus show The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. That show was a little messy, ideologically speaking, but to its credit, it definitely considered the financial aspects of life in the MCU a lot more than Hawkeye has. In that show's first episode, we see Sam Wilson unable to secure a bank loan due to his disappearance in the blip and the lack of a conventional income from his superheroics before that time. And a significant plot thread, and one important to both Sam's arc and the show's themes, is the case of the Wilson family boat, and Sam's sister's own financial woes. Look, this is a Hawkeye video, so I won't go in-depth about any of this stuff, but even if it's not the most lucid and compelling inequality allegory in the world, it's something. And it makes the Falcon and the Winter Soldier richer for its presence, because in the world of that show, we see a contrast to the wild riches of the rest of the MCU. And for the first time, we spend a little time thinking about the institutional material barriers that exist and block off many people and communities from being someone like Iron Man. And so far, Hawkeye hasn't really given this side of things a passing thought. And that's a shame, because in many ways, Hawkeye is the best of these MCU Disney Plus offerings. At time of writing, only the first four episodes are out, so maybe something changes in the last two. I hope it does, because if it doesn't, if it leaves Kate Bishop's wealth and all the unique opportunities and freedoms that follow unquestioned, then the show will feel a little like a missed opportunity to me. Writing a show about a one percenter in New York at Christmas and then sapping it of all political or ideological weight is just weird. Classic Hollywood neoliberal brainworms. And yes, you, in the back, the one that smells like Cheeto dust, I know what you're about to say, but no. Hawkeye isn't political because a female main character exists, or because it has a competent female main character. Kate Bishop isn't a Mary Sue, but even if she was, that wouldn't make it political. Daredevil was a more political show than this. That was about gentrification and government and police corruption, the thin line between crony capitalist monopoly builders and outright crime. That was about minorities being priced out of affordable housing and institutional indifference to anything other than cash. So yeah, go back to your basement, Cheeto Dust guy. But it's not all bad news because I think the next time we see Kate Bishop, there's a good chance we see this privilege addressed in some fashion. And I'll tell you why I think that. All throughout Marvel's Phase 4, the studio is clearly seeding young Avengers, like the recast version of Ant-Man's daughter Cassie coming up in Quantumania, like the Maximoff twins, like Kate herself, maybe even Kid Loki too. And to return to the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, we get a little look at Elijah Bradley in his granddad's house in Baltimore. This is Patriot from the comics, a young Avenger who sort of kind of gets some inherited super soldier juice from Isaiah. I'm simplifying, but yeah. I think when we get whatever Young Avengers Project Marvel is clearly lining up, it's pretty likely that both Eli Bradley and Kate Bishop are on the team together. And while the last thing I want is to reduce Eli to some stereotype of an underprivileged African-American youth, look at where he lives compared to Kate. These are very different backgrounds, and I'd be surprised if this didn't create some amount of tension. And maybe, hopefully, after some dialogue with Eli, Marvel will give us a Kate Bishop moment which goes some way in addressing the wild, wild wealth and privilege that the Hawkeye series seems to be taking for granted. 
Look, I don't want you to think I'm making this video as some kind of gotcha to the Hawkeye series and to the people that are enjoying it. I am one of those people. But that's my main issue with the show so far. The biggest failure of it from my perspective, as well as a proposed retroactive solution. So don't think of this as a gotcha or a scathing critique, just some food for thought. And speaking of food, it's lunchtime now and I'm hungry, so I'm gonna stop writing and go and get some beans on toast. Oh, uh, before I forget though, I recently set up a Pillar of Garbage Discord, so check that out in the description if that's your sort of thing. Otherwise, if you agree with anything I've said, then drop a like, and if you are Cheeto Dust Guy, then drop a dislike if you want. But that's it, so goodbye.